thank you i know everyone is tired it's a very long day for everyone but this session for sure will give you some food for thought and some perspective from young entrepreneur a uh, serial entrepreneur and uh, <clears throat> mr saad nasir so saad uh, at the age of 3 you cracked c++ at the age of 5 you learned java how has been your technical journey so far um yeah so i've been programming for quite some time uh since since i was 5 and honestly i started um so at home we had a pretty big library and we would have a lot of computers lying around and um so it just started very organically i just found it interesting to work with computers and just started programming um i've always been excited by science and technology and engineering like figuring out why things work um how do you make things work so somebody you know nudged you about you know somebody given some textbook uh, any mentor or father who was your inspiration at that time um i guess it started very organically um so my dad used to work with um, computers so we had quite a few um at home and a lot of books at home so i guess that was the initial spark that led to all of this and so i've i've primarily been self taught but i've also had a lot of great mentors along the way so um so uh, uh, initially i started learning how to program and was re really interested in um all all parts about computing um so i um uh, so my second grade teacher had introduced me to my first mentor at intel um uh and so uh, who taught me all about things like computer architecture and um so when i was i think 10 um i did this course called nanto tetris which is basically what is that course a uh, nanto tetris okay what is that course is all about and uh, how did you learn it um so basically the course is about exploring um all about computers from from nand gates basically to building a game like tetris so what are all the layers of abstraction on a computer so you have nand gates you put them together to build alus then you build a cpu out of it then on top of that cpu you have to build things like compilers and finally write applications on top so the course takes you through all the layers so you really understand the computer architecture um top down if i'm not wrong uh, you have dropped out from school uh, at a very early age and then since then you have been studying since from home and uh, how did the home schooling gone and like, what are the things that you learned in past 15 years yeah so um i dropped out of school in 5th grade so um what had happened was um so i'd been learning on my own even before i joined school and um and at some point we just figured that uh I was basically just repeating things that I already learned in school so it made more sense to for me to focus full um full time on learning myself um and of course one of the great things about um doing this just as um a lot of things were coming up online like um uh massively online courses like um online education was sort of just taking off as I was starting which was really helpful um and so my interests are pretty um are really broad i like working on on technology and engineering no matter what field it is and i especially like working at intersections of fields like looking at how can you use software to make hardware better and things like that um and i've done a lot of online courses in fields ranging from cryptography to aerospace engineering to um to ai and ml and things like that really amazed to know about your journey uh, you know billy really interesting to know about things you have done we adults like in age of 25 30 are still figuring out what to do next what to learn next how did you come up with you know how did you figure it out basically um i guess i can't really have a good answer to this because it wasn't a a a, a, a specific decision to go down a path um i think the most important thing to do is always be open ended and explore the sorts of things that you like um for example i uh i'd sort of start learning so the process i used for learning was more or less i would just find out things that interested me and as like i want to know how does that work um and sometimes when you try to find the answer to how something works some people say oh um we use xyz um and this is how we use xyz to make this work but then you can ask uh, what makes x work got it and um and so along this path i also started um also started like diving um d 
deep into specific things um, uh, by working on uh, various things. Like when I was um, 13, I uh, got an internship at India's only Google Lunar X Prize team, Team Indus. So the Google Lunar X Prize was a competition um, uh, sponsored by Google, uh, which basically wanted to say that uh, encourage private companies to go to space. Um, so this is at the very beginning of the private space uh, race. And basically it said, um, you have to, a privately funded team must send a rover to the moon, land it, and drive it around 300 meters. So we were one of the top two teams globally and the only Indian team. Got it. You know, just before our session, we had a very interesting session on industry and academy of collaboration. Uh, we are discussing a lot about the, you know, the gap between the talent required versus the skills that people get trained to. You are someone who have trained yourself. What is your message to the youth in terms of, you know, it is, it is a will, skill, or how they should pursue their dreams? Honestly, I think this is something where the most important thing is we have to design systems that um, are tailored for, for people and their specific needs. Um, there really is no uh, one-size-fits-all uh, type of approach to this. So this may be a bit unexpected, but for example, if, if, um, if someone were to ask me, or um, like, uh, should you go to a good university, right? Like, um, I would probably say yes. Um, but the, the important thing is you, you want to be able to, you need to have a drive to follow, uh, follow your interests. Um, and one of, the, one of the really good things is, again, I, I think the internet makes access to information really easy. Got it. So tell us about your journey as an entrepreneur when you started at the age of 14, Ati Motors. And it was at that time, probably six years back, it was the first autonomous EV vehicle manufacturer, uh, which, so tell us about that. Um, so um, basically it started because we were trying to figure out the in, like interesting problems we could work on. And um, of course, one of my favorite things is applying, um, doing things that sit at the intersection of, um, of different fields, like um, integrating hardware and software. And um, so we thought autonomous driving seemed like an interesting problem. It was. Uh, it was around a time that a lot of public road autonomy companies are really ramping up testing and uh, doing things like that. And so the first thought you get when you think of self-driving, right, is how could it ever work in a country like India? Um, but I guess the, the more we looked into it, I guess the interesting insights are um, the complexity of driving or the fact that there are no rules um, or, there's, uh, or the rule set doesn't, uh, is, is quite ambiguous um, doesn't make it harder for autonomous vehicles to drive because you have better sensors and you have better compute. So if you have more complex uh, driving patterns or more vehicles on the road, um, that's something autonomous vehicle can handle better than humans. Um, one thing that is hard though is... But how did you come up with that idea? I wanted to ask that first. <laughs> Um, yeah, basically we were trying to f figure out what was something we could do that was challenging. Um, we didn't want to do something um, that was just uh, um, a copy of something for India. We wanted to do something that would be, um, that would be interesting, unique technology that we built from ground up. So any interesting use cases of that particular product, any deployments that you have done? Um, yeah, we have a... Um, a Many deployments in India, we have deployed a lot of um, tier one OEMs and auto manufacturers like Hyundai and Bosch. Um, I believe you also have a deployment in the US and we're expanding there. Okay. One last question on your new venture. Uh, what is it all about? If you can tell us about that and that's it. Um, yeah, on my uh, new venture. So I've, I've recently started working on, um, on my next startup. Um, we're currently in stealth mode, but we're basically working on um, developer tools that make it easier and like improve the way um, people can program. Um, so a lot of you must have heard about things like um, ChatGPT and LLM. So that's a big part of um, what we're using. Okay. I'll open the house for questions. If there are any questions we can take up. Um, at, at my uh, new startup, no, we're, we're super early stage. We're not, um, we're not taking money yet. 
Uh, no. Any more questions? Anybody here? Okay, well, somebody there. Yeah. Hello, sir. It's, it's quite inspiring to listen to you. So, one question here. Do you think that getting out of the formal education will be a lot? Do you suggest that people should focus more on homeschooling? What's your opinion? Um, it really depends on, I, I, as I mentioned, it depends on uh, the specific case you're looking at. I think it does help because if, if you know the sorts of things you're interested in, um, being out of it allows you to pursue those things and sort of focus on the things you'd like to do. Um, and this especially uh, plays in very nicely with, with entrepreneurship and starting, uh, starting a company as well because if you think about it as just an extension of the same route um, that I took for educating myself where taking that approach allows you to figure out if you know what you want, uh, you can sort of go after that with more focus. And, um, and the really nice thing about, about both of them is you do get rewarded for that focus by either being able to specifically learn the kinds of things you want or work on the kinds of things you want and get rewarded for it. Anyone else? Well, there's probably one last question in the interest of time. I have one question. Yeah. Sad, what are your other interest areas apart from coding? Uh, you are aged 22 years. 21. 21. And pretty much all the audience of this age is on Instagram, social media. What are the other interest areas? Where do you spend time apart from coding and you know, learning from science and technology? Um, I think I spend a lot of my time doing that. Though I also, um, I also do enjoy um, playing video games. I play a lot of strategy games and things like that. Um, like sports as well. What kind of sports do you play? Um, cricket, table tennis. So you're telling me you're not on social media, or not on Instagram? Um, I'm not on Instagram, but I am on Twitter, though I don't really post anything. That's a news. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us.